So a guy wanted for burglary in Ohio went on the sheriff's Facebook page to read what people were posting about him. And he posted himself. All those people talking about me don't know me. They don't even know me. After um, then, the department kind of engaged him and back and forth it went. Here is what the Butler County Sheriff tweeted out uh, a picture of a jail cell saying, Buddy, we got your room ready. <laughs> Later the same day, uh, Andrew Dale Markham surrendered, and his new mugshot appears to show him possibly crying, crying in his mugshot. <laughs> I don't know what's going on there. Today's salute to the troops is for the Scriven brothers. Specialist Cody Scriven is stationed in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. Private Tyler Scriven's in Fort Bragg, North Carolina. And their dad says, I'm so proud of both of them. So he and the rest of the family just want to let them know we miss you. We love you. Thanks for what you're doing. If you have somebody in the military and you feel the same way, go to HLNTV.com slash Robin. The instructions for getting your salute on the air are right there. What were you going to say? Nothing. Oh, she's waiting to see how loud my pants are. <laughs> They're lit well. <laughs> They're a bit baggy on the air, aren't they? <laughs> Etsy, you know the site where you can get homemade, handcrafted stuff that people are so good at making? They're going public. Etsy is going public? What do you hear Jen tell you who's behind this? Good morning. Good morning. And I mean, this is the sign of the times because Etsy is a combination of what let's say millennials love right a shift in our culture anyway that it's e-commerce it's things that you buy online but it's also for things that are seen as authentic that are homemade that are handmade that you can't buy in every store across the country they are often very special like i mean special socks there people are knitting baby hats all kinds of things i think i bought my best friend um a pillow of a liver the organ because you can just find these crazy things there now is brought to you by Goldman Sachs Goldman Sachs yeah the quaint culture has gone mainstream now the IPO would value Etsy at 1.7 billion dollars it's only looking to raise about a hundred million they still don't make money consistently though but they're getting closer all right another big company may want to be next to become your wireless carrier there's a report saying that Amazon might be the next big company the way Google has said it might want to, to get into being a wireless carrier like a Sprint or a Verizon. This is a prediction made by Macquarie Research, reported by Business Insider. Remember the college basketball player battling terminal brain cancer? Well, she's getting the pro treatment. Play Greek 100. The protein packed needs something filling, taste bud loving, deliciously fruity. Grab and go. Leanin.org, uh, Leanin, Leanin which advises women on what they need to do to guarantee the same opportunities men have. So that is pretty cool right there. And that is your Bleach Report, Robin. Thank you. About the song, Marvin Gaye's kids are suing Williams, Robin Thicke, and rapper T.I., saying, Lord line is too similar to Got to Give It Up. T.I. may be the one testifying today. You know, a possible candidate for the 2016 presidential election is apologizing after he made comments about homosexuality a day ago. Now he's saying that it was a poor choice of words and it doesn't reflect how he feels. So, Michael Alanos, maybe the question as we hash it out here, well, what did he mean to say? Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, this was a part of an interview of the colleagues on, on CNN. And you, people wonder, okay, who is this guy again? A pretty it's popular. Ben Carson. Ben Carson, pretty popular among conservatives. Just launched the Presidential Exploratory Committee, whether or not to run in 2016. Also, a neurosurgeon who's known for his work uh, working with conjoined twins or separating conjoined twins. Wow. So, again, that's the background here. So then, and it's really interesting to know, before we get to the sound piece, he's being interviewed and he's asked about missteps. And he even said, I've toned it down a little bit. I've tried to learn, but yet here we are talking about something that he's had to apologize for. And the bottom line is, he basically said, uh, being gay is a choice. The apology's coming, but here was the crucial moment in that interview. A lot of people who go into prison go into prison straight, and when they come out, they're gay. So did something happen while they were in there? <clears throat> and so what led him to say that? 
about homosexuality? What was the question asked him? And, and that, a couple of great points off of that is I went back, okay, I got to listen to this. How did they get to that place? So two questions before, he was asked about missteps, and then he's asked by our colleague Chris Cuomo about same-sex marriage, and that's how they got there. And you, people wonder, okay, his views on that, he basically sounds like he is for states deciding it. So if a state votes against same-sex marriage, that's what he believes should be the law of the land. Let me get to his apology on what he said. Here it is, and he went to his Facebook page. In a recent interview on CNN, I realized that my choice of language does not reflect fully my heart on gay issues. I regret that my words to express that concept were hurtful and divisive, and for that I apologize unreservedly to all that were offended. And he goes on to say, I erred, I'm not a politician, when I do err, I'll take full responsibility. But I think that leads to the question, when you're running for president, you're thinking about it, what is the learning curve? How damaging will this be? You can tweet me about that, by the way, at Michaelanos, uh, at, at Michaelanos HLN, and well, you know, we will continue to hash it out. One other thing, and I'll talk a little bit more about this in the next hour, he is talking about the interview and whether or not it was fairly or unfairly edited. So we'll get a little bit more of that out there in the next hour. Okay, all right, thank you very mm -hmm. much, appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, one of the victims of the Boston Marathon bombing has posted a poignant letter to the alleged bomber on Facebook. I mean, it, it stops your heart when you read it. It is so well written. This is after, by the way, she faced him in court just yesterday. You know, investigators are still looking into whether Jahar and I have had an accomplice who may have helped make the bombs. And then a family on safari. Wow, did they get an up close lesson that, well, the surprising things that lions and tigers can do. Did you video that? Yeah, but it's not. Where's the cat? That is pretty cool right there. You can't ask for a better shot at that. 25. driver realizes bleeding. Tell your doctor before all planned medical or dental procedures. Before starting Zarelto, tell your doctor about any conditions such as kidney, liver, or bleeding problems. Jim changed his routine. Ask your doctor about Zarelto. Once a day Zarelto means no regular blood monitoring, no known dietary restrictions. For information and savings options, download the Zarelto Patient Center app. Call 1-888-ZARELTO or visit GoZarelto.com. Ever been stuck with a splitting headache and your little angel starts giving you help? Ah! Urgent RX Headache Relief works whenever, wherever. Just pour the flavored fast dissolving powder into your mouth. Urgent RX Fast Powders. Right now, relief. My lenses have a sunset mode and an early morning mode. To transition accidents that stretch for health or abnormal bleeding. Tell your doctor before all planned medical or dental procedures. Before starting Zarelto, tell your doctor about any conditions such as kidney, liver, or bleeding problems. Jim changed his routine. Ask your doctor about Zarelto. Once a day, Zarelto means no regular blood monitoring, no known dietary restrictions. For information and savings options, download the Zarelto Patient Center app. Call 1-888-Zarelto or visit GoZarelto.com. 
Ever been stuck with a splitting headache and your little angel starts giving you hell? So a bus driver living a life well lit. A bus driver in Detroit who told police right away that he was sleepy at the wheel, he fell asleep, now is pleading not guilty to a string of accidents that stretch for half a mile. You've got to see this tape. Kim Craig of affiliate WXYZ spoke with a man and the only passenger riding that bus. Because he dozed off while driving, it was only two seconds before impact when the smart bus driver realizes traffic is at a dead stop. And instead of hitting the brakes, when he woke up, he hit the gas. And when the 65-year-old smart bus driver finally stopped, the crash scene stretched a half mile and involved eight vehicles. Why didn't you realize you had fallen asleep? I, I have no comment. Do you, what would you say to the people that you hurt? Uh, I told them I was sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That bus driver, 65-year-old Leon Yusuf Rashid, turned himself into West Bloomfield Police to be arraigned on a misdemeanor moving violation causing serious impairment of bodily function. The video cameras on the bus show the harsh impact on the vehicles in Rashid's path as he drove down Maple near Middle Belt in West Bloomfield. The crash happened on October 20th of last year. It was 6 p.m. and inside the first vehicle he hit was an elderly husband and his wife. Both sustained serious injuries, and there was one passenger on board the bus at the time of the crash. The 73-year-old woman told police she could see traffic ahead was stopped, but the bus was not slowing down, and she knew they were going to crash, so she grabbed a railing and held on for dear life. Now, the driver, Leon Rashid, says that he had medical issues that caused him to fall asleep. He could face up to three months in jail. Did you see Conan O'Brien's big adventure in Cuba? People there got a taste of, you know, what Coco's all about. <laughs> so he was trying his best <laughs> Spanish. He took Spanish lessons, I guess, but then singing karaoke in Spanish has a whole different ball game. More on him trying to make friends in Cuba. I think he told them, I'm the most famous man in America. Don't check that. <laughs> All right, McDonald's says it's going to stop serving chicken that has been raised on antibiotics, in most cases anyway. So, Jen, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, they're going to stop using some antibiotics. They say some they'll still keep, but that's a big change for McDonald's, but they have to make this change. Their numbers have been going down, down, down. Younger customers want more quality ingredients, and they're finding them at other restaurants like Chipotle and Panera. McDonald's says it's also going to start selling milk from cows not treated with RBST, that artificial growth hormone. So it could end up being a tipping point for the industry and in the way we treat our animals, animal husbandry. A U.S. senator now has a lot of questions for lumber liquidators after that 60 Minutes report saying that its made in China laminate flooring may have high levels of formaldehyde which can, may cause cancer. So Bill Nelson is the senator from Florida. Very big deal. There's a lot of construction going on in Florida. Asked three separate agencies to start investigating, saying this could affect millions of homeowners, so it's imperative we get answers quickly. Lumber Liquidators says it shares the senator's desire for consumer safety. But this is one of those things, Robin, yeah. What do you do? Do you even know where your floor came from? From And then if it's from this company, what, what could happen next? I think most of us have never even think to ask yeah. where laminate flooring comes from. Yeah, you're just kind of looking for the good deal and what looks pretty in your house. Yeah. Right. Jen, thank you. Smoke filled the cabin of a plane after it landed in Denver. And after everybody got off, uh, the, via the chutes, by the way, they couldn't figure out where was the smoke coming from. 